We begin this hour in North Korea. CBS News has learned the U.S. tracked three short-range ballistic missiles that the North Koreans fired into the sea. The latest launch came from the country's northwest coast. It's actually the second time in five days North Korea has conducted a weapons test. The move may single gro signal growing frustrations from Kim Jong-un. Talks with the U.S. over nuclear disarmament and sanctions have slowed since President Trump's second summit with North Korea. Mr. Trump addressed the situation earlier today. Well, we're looking at it very seriously right now. They were smaller missiles, uh, short-range missiles. Uh, nobody's happy about it, but we're taking a good look, and we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the relationship continues, uh, but we'll see what happens. I know they want to negotiate. They're talking about negotiating, but I don't think they're ready to negotiate. Well, the weapons test comes as the Department of Justice announced that the U.S. has seized a North Korean cargo ship that violated sanctions. The ship's now on its way to American Samoa. Ian Lee reports on the escalating tensions in the region. U.S. officials say Kim Jong-un's regime fired several short-range missiles overnight. South Korea's military says it's still analyzing evidence from the test launched from the northwestern part of North Korea. The missiles landed in the Sea of Japan. The weapons launch comes as a top U.S. envoy is in Seoul for talks on how to break the nuclear deadlock. Five days ago, the North test-fired other projectiles after complaining about stalled nuclear talks with the U.S. that could give the North relief from sanctions. Pyongyang claims the operations were regular defensive military exercises. But South Korea's president says the North is using the test to ramp up pressure to get what they want. The last round of talks with President Trump collapsed in February after the U.S. refused to ease sanctions. Kim Jong-un gave the Trump administration until the end of the year to come up with an acceptable deal. Ian Lee, CBS News. Joining me now, Isaac Stonefish. He's a CBSN contributor and a senior fellow at the Asia Society. So, Isaac, what does Kim Jong-un have to gain by doing this at this point? It feels like it's been several weeks since North Korea has really been in the news. You know, they had that test on Saturday. And doing one again in five days is Kim Jong-un's way of reminding the Trump administration that they're there, they exist, and that they actually do have some leverage in negotiations with America. By doing this, is Kim Jong-un violating any agreements with the U.S.? Not with the U.S. So the agreement that he said, a, a moratorium on testing, would be long-range missiles and nuclear tests. So this is sort of a cute way of North Korea being able to say, OK, we're still following the agreement that we had, but we're angry and we want something to happen. President Trump addressed this earlier, saying he's looking into this, um, doesn't bode well for talks. But where do you see talks going at this point, negotiations, if something like this keeps continuing? I mean, certainly with the seizure of the ship as well, we're probably going to get into a tensor point between the United States and North Korea. I mean, these things are so difficult to predict. If we had known two years ago that Trump and Kim Jong-un would meet twice, I mean, that was so unexpected. And talks derailing is also somewhat unexpected. I think this is a good lesson, though, for the Trump administration. North Korea is a really difficult problem to solve. Mm -hmm. And if it weren't so difficult, it would have been solved already. Mm -hmm. And the reason that this has been something that has befuddled successive administrations is because it's just really, really hard. We know countries like South Korea, Japan have a great deal vested in this type of situation mm -hmm. to, to secure their countries. Moon Jae-in has been very interested in talks, diplomatic talks with Kim Jong-un. Do you think that changes? Is he changing his tune at all on that? He's being slightly more critical. And so far, this has been more of an issue between the U.S. and North Korea, these, these recent missile tests, because North Korea already has the ability to decimate large parts of Seoul by conventional weaponry. So the test is more of a warning to the U.S. and to Japan. But certainly, if things keep going in this direction, it'll be much more likely for Moon to take a harsher stance and to not want to negotiate with North Korea. You know, what's interesting, Isaac, is the U.S. special representative for North Korea is actually in Seoul right now um, conducting talks with South Korea mm. and Japan. Does this, I mean, doesn't this just destabilize what goes on at this point? It certainly does feel like the timing for this was not an accident, that they were doing this to maximize their ability to say, hey, wait, pay attention to us, especially with the U.S. and China possibly on the brink of resolving their trade negotiations or possibly on the brink of escalating into worse tensions between the two countries. North Korea really keeps trying to say to the other countries in the region and to the U.S., hey, we matter. 
do something about us. Mm. You actually wrote a column for the Washington Post where you looked at the UN World Food Program and hunger, obviously a huge issue in North Korea. And you wrote, you said the U.S. government is, quote, morally responsible for the suffering of North Korean citizens. Do you get the sense that President Trump is, is open to food aid to North Korea? Is what's being done enough and will it make a difference? You no, know, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he is open to that possibility. It's somewhat akin to the way that the state handles abusive parents. Uh, mm -hmm. North Korea does not feed its own people. It does an absolutely atrocious job of addressing the needs of its people. But that doesn't give us the right to ignore mm -hmm. the suffering of North Koreans. And unfortunately, regardless of how we did food aid, if we did, uh, it would play into the hands of Pyongyang and they would use it to their advantage. But I think the costs of that are less than allowing millions of North Koreans to go hungry. I want to go back to the breaking news for a second, the Department of Justice seizing this ship. Um, how, you know, where do you see this going? I mean, is this enough? Is this a pressure point that could potentially make a difference? I don't think so. I think it's a very important symbolic step that the U.S. is willing to actually go in and seize a North Korean ship. I mean, that, that's pretty that's pretty big news. It's the first time that they've done that in international waters. But I, I think it'd be hard to imagine this being really the turning point. And I think things are just going to sputter along for the next several months or years. And I certainly don't think that whoever succeeds Trump is going to have a nice, clean slate with North Korea. I think it's going to be continually complicated. Isaac Stonefish, thank you so much for joining us, Isaac. Thank you.